Since we have learned about the coagulation cascade on the previous video, we can now understand the mode of action of common anticoagulant drugs. Anticoagulants are drugs that prevent coagulation. They will make the blood clot more slowly or less effectively than normal. Despite being an important physiological process, coagulation may lead to thrombosis, which is when uh, a blood clot uh, blocks your blood vessels. And there are two main types of thrombi, uh, white thrombi and red thrombi. White thrombi are formed in the lumen of arteries and are rich in platelets. These thrombi may travel to your heart or your brain and lead to a heart attack or stroke, for example. And the treatment for these, uh, we usually use antiplatelet drugs and fibrinolytic drugs. Red thrombi are formed in the lumen of veins and are rich in red blood cells. These are common causes of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolisms, for example. Um, to treat these thrombi, uh, we use anticoagulants, uh, which will be described in this video. The primary goal of anticoagulants is to reduce the formation of fibrin, and they can do that by two main mechanisms. One, uh, by inhibiting the synthesis of clotting factors, or two, by inhibiting the activity of clotting factors. The first drug we will have a look here is heparin and low molecular weight heparin. Heparin is not a single substance, it is a family of sulfated glycosaminoglycans or mucopolysaccharides. Um, heparin is naturally occurring in the body. It is present together with histamine in the granules of mast cells. And one interesting fact about heparin is that it was actually discovered by a second year medical student. Low molecular weight heparins, such as anoxaparin and daltaparin, are heparin fragments. These are longer acting than unfractionated heparin and are usually preferred. Unfractionated heparin is then reserved for special situations such as uh, with patients uh, with renal failure. Heparin inhibits coagulation by activating antithrombin 3. Antithrombin 3 is naturally occurring in the body and it inhibits thrombin and factor 10A by binding to their active site. Heparin binds to antithrombin via a unique pentasaccharide sequence. Um, this will change its conformation and increase its affinity to the clotting factors. The inhibition of thrombin is achieved by unfractionated heparin and antithrombin 3 forming a ternary structure with thrombin. The inhibition of factor 10A, on the other hand, is achieved just by the binding of heparin to antithrombin. Low molecular weight heparins increase the action of antithrombin 3 on factor 10A, but not on thrombin, as the molecules are too small to form a ternary structure with thrombin and antithrombin. So just to be clear, unfractionated heparin leads to the inhibition of both factor 10A and thrombin, while low molecular weight heparins inhibit only factor 10A. And uh, one of the main hazards when treating a patient with heparin is hemorrhage. And this can be treated by giving protamine sulfate, uh, which is a compound that will form an inactive complex with heparin. So let's just draw here what heparin does in the coagulation cascade. The next drug in question is warfarin. Nowadays, warfarin is an oral anticoagulant, but when it was first discovered, it was used actually as rat poison. Warfarin is a vitamin K antagonist. Uh, vitamin K is essential for the synthesis of clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, and therefore, warfarin inhibits the synthesis of said clotting factors. 
The effects of warfarin may be countered by using vitamin K injections and this is important as warfarin can lead to hemorrhage. Uh, it is also important to note that warfarin, unlike heparin, can cross the placenta and thus leading to fetal hemorrhage. Uh, therefore, it should not be administered to pregnant patients. So, let's just draw here uh, what heparin does in the coagulation cascade. Uh, now, let's have a look at direct thrombin inhibitors and related drugs. So, heridins are polypeptides that act as direct thrombin inhibitors, and unlike heparins, they do not depend on the activation of antithrombin. These drugs are derived from the anticoagulant present in the saliva of the medicinal leech. And uh, some examples include uh, lepiridin and bivaliridin. Um, now, there are some orally active direct inhibitors, and these drugs are rapidly developing nowadays. And these include uh, dabigatran, which is a synthetic competitive thrombin inhibitor, and rivaroxaban, which is an orally active direct inhibitor of factor 10A rather than thrombin. Um, so I'm also just going to draw what these other two drugs uh, do in the coagulation cascade. So this is the end of the video. I hope you learned something new and if you've enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe.